Today we're going to start a discussion on wing design. We'll talk about macro level parameters like span and wing area and how they affect wing design. Next time we'll continue this discussion, get into some more detailed trade-offs with cord and twist. So that one's a little more complicated, so we'll just focus on that. Okay, so let me give me a second here to share my screen. Okay, there we go. To start out with, uh, I'd like us to try to fill out this table. Um, I've got five parameters here, span, wing area, sweep, thickness, taper ratio. Um, and what I'd like you to think about is each of these effects one at a time, and, and I say here increasing, just to pick a direction. Let's say I increase wingspan, for example, and just, just wingspan only. What are some of the positives or benefits of increasing wingspan? Similarly, from increasing wingspan, what are some of the negatives or downsides? You may not have an entry for all of these, but just take two, three minutes and see uh, how many you can, how many of these uh, little entries here you could fill something in. All right, so let's break these down one at a time. First, we'll talk about wingspan. Remember, wingspan is the distance tip to tip, and it's projected. So if there's dihedral, right, it's still that kind of projected span. For example, if I have vertical winglets, I can increase them as much as I want. That doesn't actually change my span. So what are some of the benefits of increasing span? I'll use a plus sign for benefit. Um, the most apparent and, and biggest benefit uh, is one we just talked about recently, and that is that it will decrease uh, induced drag. Okay. You may remember from the formula, I'll just write it here again, induced drag was lift squared, which is generally going to be my weight, times q pi b squared e, right? So there's this b squared term in here. Um, so this is a significant impact. As I increase my wingspan, my induced drag drops. And you'll remember that's why you see uh, sailplanes or soaring birds with large wingspans opposite from fighter planes or hummingbirds. Right? This uh, really helps reduce that lift dependent drag. The main downside <clears throat> is that it's going to increase weight, structural weight, right? Increases structural weight. And that's not too surprising either from a structures class, right? You could think of these as kind of a cantilevered beam there in the middle. And as I make that span larger and larger, right, there's going to be larger bending stresses on this wing. Um, and this is the primary trade off. Uh, one of decreasing drag while increasing weight, okay? Uh, there are other, other considerations, but those are by far the two biggest things. Um, some other ones is that if I have a fixed wing area, so everything else is constant, so let's say I've got a fixed wing area, then notice that as I increase span, so let's say I've got this wing, and then I increase the span, if the wing area is fixed, then it's gonna, um, the cords are gonna shrink, okay? So that means I have uh, smaller Reynolds numbers, which generally means more parasitic drag, possibly less maximum lift, but also have less volume in there. So if I'm trying to, uh, in, our, in our case, maybe store electronics, but more generally, often in an airplane, we have fuel or other things that are stored there. I have less volume to work with, okay? So that's, that's generally a downside. Um, one that could be a plus or a minus is if, that I have a, if I have a swept wing, like we see here, then as I increase the sweep, right? So this is coming out more and more, just exaggerating it here. Then the aerodynamic center, which we haven't really defined or talked about, but for now you could think about it as the center of lift. It's not really that, but just for now, think of it like that. It's moving back. And so that's gonna affect the stability of the airplane as we'll talk about next week. So that could be a plus or a minus, uh, it's hard to say, right? So we'll say for a swept wing, um, it's gonna move the aerodynamic center back. Okay, so these are the smaller considerations. By far the biggest though, is this kind of trade-off between drag and weight. All right, let's talk about wing area. <clears throat> Well, what are some of the benefits and con, pros and cons of changing my wing area? <clears throat> one 
Well, the first, maybe most uh, apparent uh, negative is that if I have more area, uh, it's more wooded area, there's going to be more skin friction drag. Okay? So more area means more skin friction drag. Right? I just have more surface for area to uh, act over it, and it's going to be, as we said, proportional. Right? Remember that S wet occurs into that so if I double my area, I've basically doubled the drag. So that's a con. Um, a pro, actually, and, and here's a way that we can see this. Remember the definition for the lift coefficient. It's just my lift divided by my dynamic pressure, which I'm going to write out, 1 half rho v squared times my wing area. Okay. So if I solve this for v, I could say v is equal to square root of two, uh, let's see if I can do this all in one step here, two times L divided by uh, CL times rho times S, okay? So um, most of the time we'll care about steady level flight. Uh, oops, what this will show me is what is the small or the slowest speed that I can fly? This will be called the stall speed. Okay, and, and we'll say that at 1g, meaning when lift is equal to weight. So Vs, V stall, I'll just write out stall, is going to be the square root of, and I've put weight instead of lift. Okay, it's going to be Cl max, the biggest that Cl can be times rho times s. So those are going to be fixed. So in other words, you know, at some point on my Here's, let's say, my airplane curve. This is my angle of attack. Here's CL. At some point, I'm going to reach, you know, the maximum CL I can get. That's the maximum lift coefficient I can get. So that's going to be, since this is the max on the bottom, the slowest speed I can fly at. We call it the stall speed. Okay, well, if I can't do much more about that, what else I can do, what I see in this equation, is I can increase my wing area. All right, so um, this increasing more area means I can decrease my stall speed. So in other words, I could fly slower. Or for uh, <clears throat> a given speed, I can have more margin against stall. And so that's helpful, you know, if I, if I need to have more maneuverability and fly at slower, slower speeds, or if I'm at a transport aircraft, this is going to affect um, the type of uh, airports I can land at, right, because it's going to affect how much runway I need, uh, both to take off and to land. So if I can get to slower stall speeds, I can take off from shorter runways or land on shorter runways. Um, <clears throat> a negative, kind of the same as or related to the, the first one. More, uh, sorry, more areas in general are going to increase weight, right? Oh, this looks looking a lot better. Rewrite this. Increase weight. All right, so it's going to be heavier generally. Um, as we see from this equation up here to changing my area, um, well, you can see it better here. It's going to change the lift coefficient I fly at. That may be a pro or a con, right? Um, I'm not going to write that, but just note that. Um, that's definitely going to have an effect. And, you know, in our last homework, we've been kind of looking at what that lift coefficient might be trying to estimate it, but what we can see is going to be coupled into that wing area. All right, uh, sweep. Let's talk about sweep. Okay, what is the benefit of sweep? Well, we've talked about one already, and it's really the primary one. Okay, there aren't many good reasons to use sweep except for one. The main reason, main benefit, is to Remember, is to reduce the transonic compressibility drag. We also call this wave drag. So I'm going to write that wave drag. Um, it's that compressibility drag. We talked about it. It comes from these shock waves, so we also call it wave drag. That was the main benefit. Remember, we talked about R.T. Jones as an experiment, or his first uh, his theoretical hypothesis and then experiments, where as we sweep the wing back, we find that Primarily, it's really that normal component that's going to affect the flow field over the wing. And so we're able to, by sweeping, reduce the incoming Mach number, the effective incoming Mach number, 
and so we can fly faster before we start uh, incurring larger shock waves and more drag. So this is by far the main reason why you see sweep. This is why you see it on every transport aircraft, every high-speed aircraft. Um, well, not every, but many high, most high-speed aircrafts will have sweep. There are a lot of downsides, though, to sweep. Okay, so if I have um, uh, sweep, and let's say I've got a fixed span. So let's say for a fixed span, since we're saying everything else is fixed, if I have this as my sweep, um, and I sweep it more, I'm just going to exaggerate here, right? And I sweep it like this. This is really exaggerated. This is too much sweep. Uh, and I didn't do it very symmetrically, but you get the idea. For a fixed sweep here, I've increased, not the span, because the span was fixed, but I've increased what we'd call the structural span. In other words, this length here, I've, I've added more weight, right? So in general, it's gonna make my aircraft heavier. Um, well, because of the structural span. There's another reason why the weight goes up. This one is less obvious. But as I sweep back, it actually loads up my tips, meaning my lift distribution gets higher at the wing tips. And so remember we talked about this bending moment that's going to be a problem as increased span. Well, if I sweep, I actually get bigger loads near the wing tip. So it's like you're pushing up even higher. I get bigger bending loads and more weight. So uh, let's say it increases tip loads. And that's also more weight. So, you know, we just doubly impacted ourselves with increases in weight. And that's, of course, not good for drag either. This also will affect tip stall, which is something we'll talk about a bit more next time. Um, in general, it's also going to decrease CL max. So, remember that lift curve we were looking at? As I sweep, I'm usually going to be less effective. Um, generally, my lift, that curve is going to come down a bit. Um, so these are all downsides, right? So if I don't, if I'm not flying at high Mach numbers, there's generally no reason to use sweep. Um, it's just going to make the airplane heavier. It's going to make it uh, have a lower CL max. Uh, there is one exception. There's one other reason why we might use sweep, and that will affect some of you. Um, it can move our aerodynamic center back. Again, we haven't fully defined this, but again, we're gonna think about our center of lift. And this is gonna affect our stability. Uh, sometimes it's better to move our CG, but this is a particularly important for a flying wing, okay? So if you're designing a flying wing, if you look at flying wings, they almost always have sweep. And we'll talk in more detail about flying wings, but just for now, just kind of keep that in mind that this is an important consideration for a flying wing because you don't have a tail and you don't have that other mechanism uh, to kind of achieve trim, that, that this can be an, uh, an important mechanism to do that, or generally the most common, certainly the easiest mechanism for doing that. Okay, so just to repeat, there's generally no good reason to do sweep unless higher Mach numbers or flying wing, or I guess just to look cool, and it does kind of look cool. So uh, for moderate amounts of sweep, it won't be a problem, but if you're you know sweeping a lot, it's just going to give you uh, some negatives generally. And there, there are more details in this, but these are kind of the main considerations. And of course, all of these things are integrated, right? We really don't do these in isolation, but these are just kind of giving you big picture trade-offs. Okay, well, what about thickness? You know, you looked at a bunch of airfoils that come in a range of thickness. Well, what are the downsides of choosing a thin versus a thick airfoil? Well, a thick airfoil uh, gives me more volume. Um, meaning I can put more things in there, I can store more fuel. If you're putting batteries and bedding servos, it gives you more room to work with. Um, you know, and it's gonna maybe increase the stiffness there. Uh, it actually, for many wings, will reduce weight, okay? Could reduce weight, but not for your airplane. We'll talk about this in more detail later, but the reason for that is that um, these large transports are not going to be, it's not a solid structure. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to have a stiffened skin panel, and then you may have, so there's, you know, material up here on top, 
And then you're going to have, let me just kind of share with you, have like a box beam structure. So you're going to have this main spar here, another spar going through. Uh, so you've got this kind of structure and everywhere else is hollow. This, this is like, you could think of this as a, as a beam. Well, it is basically like a beam across the wing. Um, a box beam that comes through and there are different shapes, but this is a common uh, example. And that's the main structure of the wing. Outside of that, there's going to be the skin uh, that's stiffened, but the main purpose there is not structure. It's to create this aerodynamic shape, right? Because that box, of course, is not a good wing. And it's actually really uh, thin. In fact, when you fly, some look out the wing next time, depending on where you're sitting, you may see like over here on the wing, um, it'll say like no step, right? Like you don't want to step there or drop a tool there. There'll be parts over here where you can walk because there's just no real structure there. You could damage, you know, the aluminum or whatever it's made, uh, whatever type of wing it is. Many of them are aluminum and, and you could damage it, right? Or, or break it. So um, you can't step there. So why does thickness decrease weight? Well, if I make this thicker, all right, and I'm exaggerating here a bit, not too much. I've increased my moment of inertia. So if this is really thin, remember this is the, the, one of the primary loads here is gonna be this bending stress. So if I make that moment of inertia bigger, and the stress for bending is gonna be this my over i, uh, if I make my moment of inertia bigger, then I can reduce the stress that I experience for a given bending moments. So actually increasing thickness, although that may seem somewhat counterintuitive at first, will often decrease the weight in the wing. And that's not true for your airplanes because you're going to have like these solid foam construction. So obviously just making it thicker just adds more material, more weight. Um, but for you know, larger airplanes, this, this, is, this is the case. Thicker is also nice because uh, it often will increase CO max. Increase CO max, so it can be good for aerodynamic performance up to a point. So normally, if you see a curve, thickness, CO max, um, you know, I'm just going to draw a notional curve here. It's going to come up and then it's going to kind of come down again. The point where it peaks out is usually thicker than many. Uh, the many airfoils are designed from just a pure like drag perspective. So actually making them a bit thicker, if you need that extra lift can be beneficial. Um, but you know, you, you have to look at it on a more case by case basis. So, so there are a lot of benefits to thickness. Um, the main downside is increased drag, right? It's gonna increase parasitic drag. And that's not surprising, right? From a drag perspective, and we saw this when we went through parasitic drag, this is our form factor. Um, if I have a really, really, really thin wing, right? I mean, that's going to disturb the flow less and have a much smaller wake. That's going to be really ideal. Um, but then from a structure's point of view, now my wings are, this is again, mainly an aero, aerodynamic structural trade-off. If it's thin, it's generally better for aerodynamics, at least drag, not seal max. But it's going to be worse for structures, right? My wings are now, even if it's solid, right? If it, even if it doesn't increase or decrease weight, or if, even if it doesn't reduce weight, it decreases my stiffness. So even with your foam wing, right, if I make it really thin, it's going to be more floppy, it's going to be less stiff, it may be more prone to breaking and things. So it's primarily uh, an aerodynamic structural trade-off, kind of like wingspan. And of course, at high speeds, as we talked about, you really want those thin wings, uh, just like we want these sharp edges. So increasing thickness at high speeds is going to be uh, increased drag even more, right? So it's not just parasitic drag and wave drag, compressibility drag. Okay, um, cord, uh, you know, we, we defined a taper ratio before, but most modern wings don't have just one linear taper, um, especially with increasing use of composites, they're gonna have more complicated shapes. Uh, we're gonna save the discussion for cord till next time, and because it's gonna be, there's a little more nuance there that we wanna get into and, and have more time to get into that. Um, similarly with twist, but uh, I just want to show you a picture of that just so you can keep in mind what that is. So cord, of course, is that length of the airfoil from the front to the back. Twist is if I'm looking at that cross section of the airfoil, I can rotate that airfoil and it's going to twist differently, right? So if this is my wing, I've got this wing here, right? 
and I can twist it. This isn't that flexible, you can see, but imagine you take it, right, and you rotate your hands in a different direction. I can twist the wing throughout, right? I can have a different twist at the root and the tip and all the way throughout. This is gonna have a strong impact on my lift distribution and, and my lift coefficient distribution uh, because of that, as we'll see. So this is again, something that we're gonna talk a little bit more about next time. I just wanted you to, for now, just kind of get the definition of twist uh, in mind. This is a bit different than angle of attack because angle of attack is like the angle for the entire airplane. So if the angle of attack increased, increased over the whole airplane, that would be like I twisted everywhere. But twist, as a distribution, it can change throughout. I can have a different twist at this part of the wing than I do here. Okay. Um, yeah, that's good for this time. So next time, we're going to get more into the cord and twist and try to understand uh, how we can change those so we can get a desirable lift distribution and lift coefficient distribution. We'll see you next time.